My next guest is a celebrity photographer who has captured the images of major celebrities, including Nick Cannon, Alicia Keys, Cardi B, SZA, Wanda Sykes, and many more. Today he joins me to discuss his greatest achievements, humble beginnings, and valuable tips for creators. Clifton Prescott, welcome to the Shundria Show. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here. Yes, you are doing well, I must say. <laughs> um, I was excited because I saw early in the summer you captured Nick Cannon's twins, is it Zion and Zillion, and you photographed his other children, Baby Zen, Golden, Powerful. Um, mm -hmm. My first question is, how special is it to reach this point in your career where you're capturing some of the most special memories for celebrities like Nick Cannon? Wow, yeah, it's uh, it's a very extremely special um, time that I'm living in right now as an artist. Uh, I don't take it for granted at all. I mean, I think working with anybody, whether it's a celeb or a diplomat or just like even a regular person, you know, it's to be able to um, be trusted with your eye and your skill and your craft to be able to create memories for uh, any individual is pretty amazing. So, I mean, it just so happens that in this case, it's Nick and his children and, and his family. And I just, uh, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. And it's, it's nice to be a part of a, their history you know i think photography especially like for like family photography i think is special like you said whether it's a celebrity or not i mean you know pictures last a lifetime you know yeah, um, yeah. i mean it's it's i feel like to me it's even more powerful than video sometimes because that's the photo that's going to go on your mantle that's the photo that's on your wall that's the that's the photo you you're going to live when your baby's 18 you have that date my god <laughs> that baby picture is not going anywhere you know so Absolutely, that yeah. makes it even more incredible for you to, you know, use your art in such a meaningful way. Um, so that makes me ask, what have been some of your proudest achievements as a celebrity photographer? Because your list of credits is is outrageous, <laughs> you know. But what are what are some of your proudest achievements where you were like, okay, yeah, Clifton, you're in the mirror, like Clifton, you did that. Like, what were some yeah. of those moments? <laughs> Man, it's it's so hard. I. I uh... I definitely have not arrived, but it's like, uh, it's, there's a lot. Why are you so humble? <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Definitely have not arrived. Um, some of my proudest moments. I mean, I think uh, I think it goes back to just, you know, what an experience that I had when I was in college. Um, I, I was at a birthday party of a mutual, uh, of, a, of a friend of mine, and, and the princess of Nigeria, Keisha Omolana, was there. And she was an ex, she's you know, ex supermodel and all, just her aura walking in the room was so amazing. And my friend introduced me to her and, and uh, you know, told them that, told Keisha that I was a photographer. And uh, Keisha was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, you know, let's shoot sometime. And I was like, what? Like, this is, I'm 19, 19 or 20 at the time. And uh, she's like, you know, let's shoot. And um, she's like, you have a studio? And I was like, I don't have a studio. I have a dorm room though. You know, I've been doing all my shoots there. And she's like, sure, let's do it. And that was, uh, I think one of the coolest moments of my life, uh, even though it was so long ago, I just appreciate it because of, of how humble and gracious she was that giving me opportunity to even photograph her uh, being who she was. And then, and then even just again, humbling herself, uh, you know, to come to my dorm and shoot in my dorm and give me the opportunity and all my my classmates and my uh, my dorm mates were looking through the windows you know trying to see like there goes cliff again shooting but i think that was one of my my proudest moments just because it, it was something where i didn't allow my current situation being a young broke college student with no studio and i didn't let that get in the way of my dream which was being a photographer and and photographing you know you know uh, diplomats in this case uh, but just, you know, anyone in general. So, yeah. Okay, let's park right there. Take me back to the beginning as a college student. You, you know, you're a college student. You have these ambitions of being this amazing photographer. You know, at that time, how, because you said, you know, you were a broke college student, but you had dreams, you know. So how did you envision success at that time in your life? Wow. Uh, back then, my 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 definition of success was probably very skewed and, and a I pick $100 and a, a meal card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, even, yeah, back then, I mean, people ask me, like, you know, how I started and 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 what, and how much did I charge? I, I always have, like, young, you know, younger artists ask me, like, how much did I charge when I first started? 
And I was just like, look, I just did what I could and what I needed at the moment. So if I needed $70 as a 19 year old, I was gonna charge $70. But um, yeah, I mean, back then, you know, what I was striving for was um, a level of, uh, and I still am striving for it, but a lot of the artists that I looked up to, whether it was Alexi Lubomirsky, Hunter and Gotti, um, Mario uh, Testino, um, all these different fashion photographers, I always looked up to them. I would save their work and pull out the pictures in magazines, and I would just try to model um, my career or my budding career uh, after theirs. You know, I would just study their work so much and, and just try to mimic and imitate and understand the lighting and photography and framing um, by looking at you know, the greats um, at the time that I was starting off. So, yeah. You know, the average college student isn't quite as tenacious, <laughs> you know, especially early on in the college mm -hmm. career. And so, you know, I'm hearing how ambitious you were, you know, you were doing vision boards before it was even a thing to do, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. you had a lot of hustle and grit at that time. Um, would you say that attributed to, you know, reaching the pinnacle? Like I say, I know you're, you're in your mind, I'm still climbing. I haven't reached the top. I'm still growing, you know, but I mean, imagine if your future self came to you at 19, would it be like, okay, that's exactly what I'm working towards. I'm glad to know yeah. like my efforts are in vain. Let's talk about that hustle that you had at 19. Yeah, you absolutely. You're not in the dorm and going to class at 8 a.m. and coming back to play video games. Like you were doing full on photo shoots in your dorm room. That's not common. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, the hustle was very important. Um, I think that's something that everybody um, really has to tap into, especially if they want to get to a certain level at their in their life, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, I've, I feel like I did hustle a lot. Like I said, I tried to make it happen anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And I do feel like there's, um, there's a, there, there's, and this was before YouTube, so before you can start looking at videos on how to do what you needed to do, like it was very much uh, apprentice, apprentice uh, minded, so that I had in, in back then. Um, I, I needed to get in front of people. I needed to learn from them, uh, get hands on, and I, I would I emailed. I remember in my senior year of college, I emailed about thirty of the top fashion photographers in the world to get an opportunity to intern for them. And nobody got back to me. And it was, an, it was a year after I graduated um, college that one photographer got back to me. He's like, hey, are you still available to intern and come in? And his name was Alexi Lubomirsky. And uh, I was like, yes, absolutely. But you know, so it's, it's like sticking with it. In, in between that time I sent the email and the time that I got the first, my first fashion photography internship, I was a, I had I was unemployed for 11 months and then yeah I was unemployed for wow geez I was unemployed for a while but I was always even in that time of unemployment I was still like trying to do onesie twosie photo shoots here and there so it's sticking to it you know like how bad do you really want it it sounds so cliche but sticking to it and getting that hustle uh, because I feel like a lot of times a lot of artists um, especially now are getting to certain levels and achieving certain things faster than their character can allow, can sustain. And because of that, uh, you're, you're skipping out on experiences that you need to have as an artist, that you need to have as a business person to be able to maintain uh, your, your, the level of success that you're, that you're, that you're trying to attain. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And sometimes I think about like, you know, starting out before there was so much technology in the creative space, you know, before there were the YouTubes and things like that, where you really did have to put the work in to learn whatever it was you were trying to learn or, or craft. Um, I mean, I think it's really dope that you, you were sowing seeds in yourself. I mean, even if it took 11 months, I think you probably would have been happy if it took five years, you know, when you finally got, you know, it, it kind of solidifies that I know I'm headed in the right direction. And those little reminders that, you know, even if it's a year later, when you got the call back, like you said, you never let it go. Um, right. And you mentioned, you know, obviously aspiring creatives. Um, 
aspiring photographers, a new generation, you know, are starting out, what encouraging words do you have for someone who's just setting out an aspiring photographer who looks forward to growing creatively and elevating professionally the way that you have? What words of encouragement do you have? I think that the biggest thing I can say, there's two things, but the, the first and most prominent one is you have to be an apprentice for somebody. I feel like apprenticeship is dying. Um, the idea of it, the, everything about apprenticeship is dying. Everybody just wants to do it on their own and do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's possible to do that. I mean, there have been people that have done that, but a lot of those people are not here today. They had their 15 minutes of fame and they're no longer there. So I think that uh, apprenticeship is so key. So if you really want to work uh, and really want to get to a certain level, you really want to be, in, uh, a, in this case, a photographer, you need to apprentice for somebody. And not just for three weeks. Like I did it for three, four years uh, before I ventured off into my own. And that, and that some people might say that is short because I know people that did it for longer. Um, but when you do apprentice for somebody, I think that the main thing is not just about what you can get from them, but when you apprentice for somebody, it's like, show what you can give to them while learning for yourself, because they don't need you. They can get anybody else to apprentice for them, but you want to learn from them. So you need to be able to provide value to them. And in turn, they'll provide value to you by allowing you in their space and allowing you on their journey. Um, the second part, what I would say is, uh, especially for those in the Northeast and New York City area, usually a lot of people come to New York for photography. I think it's very important to work in some type of uh, a rental house, equipment rental house, or for, for like a film, photo film equipment, uh, re equipment rental house, or um, a photo studio. Uh, you need to touch equipment. You need to know uh, what the names of certain things. You need to know uh, the business of it. Uh, a lot of people wanna be the artist and that's fine. If you want to be an artist that you know is making money and, and embracing the business end of it, uh, then you really need to make sure that you're not neglecting the business end of things, and you need to get around that. And I think the best way to get around that uh, and uh, dive into that is by working in an equipment rental house in a um, in the city or uh, or a photo studio in the city. You've given some really valuable tips, you know, for anyone who's watching that's an aspiring creative or you're currently a creative and you're ready to elevate. Um, the biggest takeaway that I got from you today is about the apprenticeship, um, but also to play the long game. You know, like you said, sometimes we want this microwave, you know, quick turnover. I want to learn it. I want to learn photography in three months. And, you know, that's not... <laughs> That's not, does it work? Does it happen? I'm pretty sure a lot of things happen, you know, but I like that you said to play the long game, take your time, perfect your craft, get with somebody who's already in the business. And I really like that you said to bring value to whoever you're you're working with. Don't just come to receive the information, but bring a skill set, bring some value. So those are really remarkable tips. I'm really curious, what was the model of your first professional camera since you've had so much, you know, you had guidance, you tapped into your resources. What was your first camera? My very first camera uh, DSLR was an Olympus E500. And it had like a 18 to 135 lines or something like that on there. But uh, it, was a, it was a camera, it was like one of the, you know, my dad was a, a, was a tech guy. And uh, we were always like the first to have whatever new in tech came out on the block. And at the time that I think that was one of the first or it was an entry, I, I, may, I don't even know if it's an entry level uh, DSLR, but it was, it was a good DSLR at the time. <laughs> and, uh, and my dad had it and he was letting me shoot on it. And uh, yeah, that was the very first model that I had. And then it grew to a Canon 7D. And then the next camera was a Canon 5D and then a Canon 1D and now a Sony A9. And uh, I still shoot Canon, I just needed to I'm embracing both brands right now. I'm trying to see which one I'm gonna stick with, but yeah. Now you have a list of five must-haves for a professional photographer. And you've got your Sony A1 camera. You've got your Black Rapid Double Breath Harness for camera, Profoto B10 Plus off-camera flash, Samsung T7 SSD hard drive, Sony 2470G Master Lens. Why are these the perfect essentials for your camera gear? 
Right. So, I mean, for, for a professional photographer, I think those are absolutely ideal. Um, with the A1, with the Sony A1, I shoot a lot of key art, you know, which is like movie posters and um, art for artwork for TV shows or film. Uh, and you just need a, a camera that's able to perform and deliver the quality that's necessary for large scale, um, large scale viewing. Um, than the 24 to 70 camera that goes with it. I think it's just the, it's the very, it's, it's, a, it's a good lens, but it's the very least that I would say like you have to at least have that lens. It's a very versatile lens. And I feel like um, you're able, if you're able to have that, you can get a lot of good work done with it. The, um, the uh, Profoto B10 uh, is probably the best compact, uh, battery powered light out there right now. Profoto is an amazing brand. I've been using them since I was apprenticing uh, back in 2010. Um, and ever since then, I've been sticking with Profoto products and Profoto B10 is great. You can change the color temperature of the model light and it packs a lot of power, especially in the B10 plus. So it's good for using outdoors on location and in studio. Um, the Samsung T7, uh, one of my, it's a, it's a very good, it's a compact, uh, um, it's a compact uh, hard drive that is super quick. So, and, and things that usually took, I want to say things that usually took like two hours to back up, you know, now takes uh, eight minutes. Uh, so you have, you know, like, I, I love that, uh, that mini compact hard drive, solid state drive. Uh, and again, you just need, in this business, you, it's all about speed and consistency. And that hard drive can really um, meet the demands of our jobs as photographers. Um, the last thing, was there one more? I said the camera, the, the lens, the, the light. The uh, master lens, Sony 24-7 master lens. Yeah, I said that one. Uh, uh, we got them all, the flash, the hard drive, the harness. Oh, the harness. Yeah, of course. How can I forget? <laughs> My folks at Black Rapid. Oh, man. So um, the Black Rapid, uh, the Black, I'm sorry, should I start over? Are you going to cut no, it? No, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Rapid double breath harness. Yeah, the, okay, here we go. So the Black Rapid double breath harness uh, by Black Rapid is amazing. On my sets, uh, often not or on my sets, but on, on film sets that I work on, I often use two cameras, one on the right, one on the left, and the black rapid straps really help out, uh, enabled, enables me to access my uh, cameras very quickly. They stay on my side pretty tight to me, so they're not swinging all around and bumping into stuff. I absolutely love this brand. It's lightweight, like the name says, it's breathable. Um, and yeah, just again, it really helps me to be able to grab a camera quick so I can grab this one, let go, grab the other one, make it happen on, on whether it's a 24 to 70 on my right lens or a 70 to 200 lens on the other. So um, it really meets, again, like I said, you need items, you need accessories that's going to meet the demands um, of the job that you're on. And these are the five items that I believe every professional photographer should have. Well, you are remarkable. I tell you that. I mean, have you reached a point in your career where you're, you know, offering apprenticeships yourself? Yeah. So for a while, I didn't. And, and uh, all my friends that do have interns and apprentices always yell at me like, Cliff, you got to stop doing work on your own. You got to get some people on your team. And I think it was an issue of just like trust because um, um, just with the type of clientele that we're, I'm working with, and I'm, it's not just me, but any photographer or any artist that has access. I think access is, um, as one of my pastors said, is one of the greatest gifts that you can get in life. You have to be so careful and you really have to be a good steward over the access that you grant and the access that you get in life. So um, for a while I didn't do it, but I'm realizing that I, I, I need a team. I need to have some assistance. I, I've got a lot of tasks that I cannot uh, that I need to not spend my time on so I can focus on other things as an artist. So I am, uh, I'm opening up the team right now. Actually, I, I was looking for more um, interns as well as specific roles like uh, videographers, writers and such to join the team. So yes, it, it is now open. So keep your eyes open on 
my social media pages and such and, and email blast. Well, phenomenal. Clifton Prescott, I want to thank you for being my special guest on the Shundria Show today. I'm very grateful. If anyone is interested in booking your photography services, following your journey online, or even checking out that internship, what's the best way to connect with you? So the best way to reach me right now uh, is my email info at cliftonprescott.com. C-L-I-F-T-O-N-P-R-E-S-C-O-D, as in David, dot com. Uh, my socials on every social media platform. My name is at Clifton Prescott. Definitely add me there. I respond to people, everything. Like I'm very active on that. I believe it's it's necessary. So you can definitely catch me on, th on those uh, social platforms. You'll be able to see all the new work that I'm doing as well as announcements like internships and apprenticeships. Fantastic. Well, thank you again. You enjoy the rest of your weekend and I can't wait to share the video with you. I'll connect with your publicist, Rachel. So thank you All so right. much. <laughs> Bye you. now. Take care. All right. Have a good day, Chandra. Thank you. Bye-bye.